In the 1780s, the Royal Navy had begun a transition in its fifth-rate frigates. Prior to this, most of this class of vessel had been 32 gunships armed with a main battery of 12-pounder guns. But with the Flora and Minerva classes, a move was made to mostly 36 or 38 gunships armed with 18-pounder guns. Whilst by the turn of the century, the Navy also possessed a handful of 24-pounder armed frigates, mostly Razés, the 18-pounder ship was by now pretty much the standard. It was into this environment that a single ship, HMS Lively, was ordered in October 1799. Whereas previously, fifth rates of this type had been built as either one-offs or in short production runs, Lively, along with contemporaries Apollo and Leda, would start a trend in fifth rate production of large numbers of a class being ordered, usually after enough time had elapsed to determine if the first ship was coming together well on the slipway, albeit before that ship had usually entered service. Thus, whilst in modern terms we might call these classes the Lively class, Leda class, etc, etc, at the time these batches of ships were termed Repeat Livelies, Repeat Laders, Repeat Apollos, and so on and so forth, and the initial vessel was thus not always considered part of the class, especially as a number of small changes that were learned in the construction of the first ship would often be incorporated from the start in all subsequent vessels. In any case, Lively and her successors would be regarded as fairly successful ships, being the largest of the three contemporary classes at about 1,071 tonnes burthen, or approximately 1,600 tonnes displacement as we would understand it, and being 154 foot in length along the gun deck. Equipped as standard with three masts, the ships in general were quite fast, attaining 13 knots under full sail and just over 10 knots under more standard canvas. Their size and displacement made them capable of handling the seas somewhat better than many similarly rated ships, which would grant them a positional advantage in the kind of close action that many frigates encountered during the Napoleonic Wars. Notionally, the ships were rated for 38 guns, with a main battery of 28 18-pounder guns in a pair of 14-gun broadsides, plus five smaller guns per broadside, two on the forecastle and three on the quarterdeck. The main gun deck was actually pierced with 30 gun ports, but two of these positions were bow chaser ports for which the foremost broadside guns would be repositioned, with similar provision made in the stern gallery for stern chasers as the need arose. However, by this time period, the on-paper armament was a case of blatant lies, since the Royal Navy had adopted and widely deployed the carronade, whilst also not counting it towards the total number of guns that a ship carried. They only counted the long guns, although that would change a few decades later. Thus, a typical Lively class would actually go to war with something more akin to 46 guns, with a relatively minimal 9-pounder long gun armament up top, and most of the smaller long guns being replaced with 32-pounder carronades, plus a few more thrown in for good measure. Discounting the bow chaser positions, plans for HMS Nissus, taken when she came in for a refit in 1810, showed no less than 25 gun ports per side for a total of 50 mounted guns. A total of 16 ships were built to these specifications, entering service between 1804 and 1813 and seeing service in a wide variety of locations. Three ships would be lost on active duty. Two, Lively herself and the Statira, fell victim to the single largest cause of loss to the Royal Navy in the Napoleonic Wars, running aground. The other wartime loss was HMS Macedonian, which ran into the USS United States in October 1812, being relatively quickly overwhelmed and forced to strike her colours, despite in theory being a materially sound ship, unlike the Guerrier, and also having a theoretically experienced crew, unlike the Java the other two fifth rates that had been defeated by the US Navy in the opening stages of the War of 1812. This would be reflected in the outcome of the various captains' careers in the aftermath of their defeat. Captain Lambert of the Java died of wounds sustained in the battle. Captain Dacra of the Guerrier went on to further active commands, including a ship of the line and a whole station's worth of ships. Whilst Captain Carden of the Macedonian was never allowed to command a ship again. 
Macedonian herself was taken back to the United States, recommissioned as USS Macedonian, and would serve under the Stars and Stripes until 1828, when she was broken up, having occasionally, amongst other things, been sent out to sail alongside HMS President when that ship was deployed to patrol the US East Coast by the Royal Navy. Some other ships of the class, including the Spartan and Menelaus, would also see action in the War of 1812, although to somewhat greater success than the Macedonian. Although mostly placed into reserve following the conclusion of the Napoleonic Wars, the surviving ships would occasionally be reactivated for brief commissions as regular frigates, or else would find themselves used in secondary purposes, such as troop ships, accommodation vessels, or training ships. Of particular note are the Horatio, which was converted in the 1840s to a screw-driven guard ship, and then subsequently during the Crimean War into a mortar-armed bomb vessel, and the aforementioned Menelaus, which became the longest-lived of the class, serving mainly as a hospital ship through most of the 19th century, and only going to the breakers in 1897, whilst most of the other ships would be sold out of service in the 1850s and early 1860s, as by that point steam-driven frigates and ironclads had supplanted them in any useful active role. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.